Armored Warfare again, and I'm going to be reviewing the Merkava Mark One. This is the first Merkava in the game that you'll get after you go through the Magok at Tier 4. And you can either go to the Magok B6, which is this thing here, or to the Merkava 1, which is this one here. You can see size-wise, the vehicle is fairly large compared to a T64. It's obviously quite big. T-72 is a bit bigger. Starship is pretty big. But yeah, the Merkava is pretty long, pretty tall. But some of it's from this big basket in the back, but it's still a fairly large tank. But size-wise, it's... I think the Magok's a little bit bigger. <laughs> it's uh, a little bit more uh, odd-looking. Anyway, we will quickly get into the statistics. The Makava was made in 1977 as the main battle tank because uh, I think the British refused to sell them chieftains, so they decided to make their own tank. And a couple of neat things about it, the engine's in the front to protect the crew, so you won't be shooting it in the front. You can see, actually, the exhaust ports for the engine right here, and they'll kick up a heat haze uh, when you see the tank starting up at the beginning of the game and things. So keep that in mind that the engine is right about here in front of the tank. So if you want to knock the engine out, don't shoot here. That's just a crew compartment in the back. So what we'll do is we'll take a look at the gun stuff first. So the gun depression is not so hot, minus six, and the gun elevation is not really that great either. The aim time of 2.38 seconds isn't bad. Uh, turret traverse, okay. 36 it's not great um penetration wise we're looking at 370 which is pretty average for tier 5 it's not great it's not bad the reload time in between shots when you're reloading a shot into the auto loader is 9.1 seconds but between shots with the auto loader i think it's somewhere around five or six seconds so it's a, a fair bit quicker when you're actually shooting when it has shots loaded into the auto loader it has a four ready rack system in the auto loader as far as i remember and it can pop out damage fairly quick but then you're going to be spending probably about nine times worse 36 yeah you're spending quite a lot of time reloading shots back into the the auto loader so damage wise you're doing about 420 which is substantially less than something you'd get the get out of something like the t64 which can put out up to 600 damage from its AP rounds. So it does less, but it can output more damage in a short span of time, but then it needs to kind of drop back and reload everything back into the ready rack auto loader system. So the, the tank plays a little bit differently than some other vehicles just because of how the gun works. So next we'll talk about the armor. I'll uh, actually talk about mobility next. The The tank can get up to about 50, but it takes quite a long time to get there, especially when it needs to climb hills. It's not got a very powerful engine for how much it weighs, which is a lot. It weighs 60 tons. So ramming this thing typically isn't a very good idea, especially if you're in a T-72 or something smaller. So don't ram it. Uh, it doesn't turn especially well. The turret isn't especially fast either. So you'll want to watch out for that. I haven't found any accuracy problems with the gun. It uh, is pretty okay as far as that goes. Uh, next, we'll jump into the armor which and the hit points. So hit point-wise, it's actually 3,350, which is a lot. It's got more hit points than a Tier 9 T90 MS. So it can soak up a lot of damage. And because of how the armor is laid out, it actually can side scope fairly well because the turret's a little bit biased a little bit more to the rear it's not quite centered to the tank as far as i can tell if it was centered to be here it's a little bit more to the back so you can kind of scrape out a bit and you'll bounce stuff off the side sometimes shots that you think would go in don't go in the armor profile when you're shooting at it with ap rounds with its own gun with a it's got a 105 millimeter gun. You can pretty much shoot through the, the lower plate fairly easily. And there's a little spot on the turret that you can hit as well. As well as there's a small little sliver of stuff you can hit on the turret ring. The Anything at 7 or 8 can pound right through your lower plate. And in certain cases, um, if you can shoot down on it through the upper plate. But uh, from the front, the, the tank's not bad. It's got a lot of crazy angles on the turret that are fairly hard to get through. 
and it's got a lot of spaced armor all over the place as well, which you can see here. You can see additional armor if I peel that off. It's got a lot of spaced armor capped all over the front of the vehicle. From the side, the tank is fairly easy to pen, especially in, even from the back. So you really only have to worry about the Merkava's armor from the front. But once you get in a position where you're sort of like this-ish, it's fairly hard to pen the side. You're going to ricochet or bounce off unless you have higher pen. And the lower plate, I've had to shoot at myself uh, with the Merkava 1. And it's, it's bouncy-ish from the front, even shooting at the lower plate. So you want to watch out for giving too much to your side because you're fairly big and... Well, you're going to lose a lot of your hit points. So next we'll go into the rounds. I take about a half-half split because the the heat round actually has a lot higher penetration at 450 compared to the 370 from the AP round. I don't take any other, other hip rounds. I don't really know. I don't really care about hep. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't take any special consumables. As far as my modules go... I take the accelerator and the engine extra engine hit points so I can try and get the thing up to speed a little bit quicker. A um, little bit more to bounce up the, the hull traverse and something to get the reload time a little bit quicker. Uh, I don't. I usually use Fedor in all my main battle tanks because he's my favorite guy. I'm trying to get him up to the high level. And I have a level 3 crew, so they're not terrible, but they're not bad. I mean, they're not great, so they're kind of midway through their, their level up procedure. Uh, upgrade wise there's quite a lot of stuff to upgrade and you can rent a couple neat tanks from here as well uh, one of the neat things is you actually got a fire suppressing system to keep the crew alive which is nice the tank has a lot of stuff for improving the amount of hit points with a spall liner and stuff and then here you get the applique armor package there so it has a fair bit of stuff to unlock as you move through the tank uh, the next one down the line is the Merkava 2C, and it looks fairly similar to this one. It's just slightly better in most ways. So we'll jump into some gameplay, and you can see how the Merkava Mark 1 is out on the battlefield. Okay, so here we go. We're on waterway again. I happen to get this map quite a bit. Uh, but I'm happy to play on it because I think it's one of the better global ops maps that's out there. Much better than the Ghost Field. I, I can't stand that map. I don't know why. I just really, really don't like it. Probably because it's a bowl map where it's high on the outside and a big dip in the middle. This map doesn't suffer from that massive design flaw. So at this point, I'm just deciding to drive right into the, the three cap and see how well I can do. I gave up my side to try and get over here and took a lot of damage doing so. Damaged my ammo rack and yeah, not great. <laughs> so, but I got in this position and I wanted to help my team but I was like rammed up on the side of that and I couldn't get my, my gun down. So I decided that I'm going to put my shots into the guy that I can actually hit but there was a tank off to the right that was going to start putting rounds into me now and there wasn't too much I could do about that. I'd already smoked to try and not get shot more, and then I get taken out. So the tank can easily be be killed by especially tier six and tier seven stuff. We are bottom tier in this game, so it's gonna show off that the tank isn't <laughs> it isn't invulnerable by any stretch of the imagination. So I'm gonna wait for the the respawn here, but uh, getting into position uh, when the map is flat, like this map is a fairly flat flat map it's not so bad but uh, the more hilly maps especially the ice map I think like roughneck uh, that one has a little bit more hills not not as great you can see here it takes a little bit a little bit of time to get up to speed now I'm up to 30 and that took quite a long time this was during the, the two-day weekend where they put artillery into the game and I will get shot by artillery in this game as well there hopefully not going to add it back in and just keep it in PvE, but we'll have to see what happens. I didn't get too destroyed by it. Artillery isn't as problematic in this game as it is in other games because it doesn't one-shot kill you and then you'd have to go back to the garage. That's one of the most maddening things. I thought I was going to make that shot. I don't know exactly what I hit, but I guess I shot into the ground and 
one of the enemy tanks drove into the water there and he's probably going to die because there's no way out of that canal because I found out later that uh, if you drive in there you die and he just drowned. <laughs> I uh, I wasn't sure. I wasn't paying attention when uh, later in the game when I decided I was going to test to see if I could go down there and no you can't go in there without dying. So don't drive into the waterway uh, near the, the, the 656 line because you can't get back out. You just die. And now I, I just really just wanted to hold the, the three cap and get off to the side a little bit over here. And I was starting to get shot by artillery. It's a little bit of a warning there. And you can see the traverse of the tank isn't that fast. The turret traverse isn't that fast. And the artillery hit me and it tracked me, which wasn't great because now I'm going to take shots because of it. And this is one of the problems with artillery. It's like, did I deserve that? <laughs> Can I, can I fight back against that? Not really. Like, yeah, don't get spotted, scrub. Is that like, you know, what are you supposed to do? So I got a couple of shots into this T90 and then another Merkava came around, but I was on top of a car or something. And I don't know why that shot didn't go in. I'm now shooting at a 2C. This is the tier six Merkava. I'm not pronouncing this right. It's Merka Merkava, I think, not Merkava, but, um, Along the, the bottom strip of the 2C is where you can pen it. You can see it's not very big. And I'm waiting for it to go green, and then it goes red, and it's like... It's a little bit hard sometimes to tell whether you're going to pen. Um, I wish it was a little bit better with uh, the indicator telling you what was going on, what's not going on. And for some reason, my tank wasn't drawing. There's a little bit of camera collision issues there, and I was getting shot. Pretty, sh pretty sure the artillery was just lobbing shots into this position so I had the the flanks of guys if they were gonna try and push in but I was on really really low hit points and I was like kind of stuck so I used the, the building to push off from the wall a little bit and I poke around the corner to see if anyone's still there and I get spotted of course and I don't really have a lot of options and then I wish I was paying attention a little bit better there but I ended up shooting the, the column a little bit bad on the accuracy. I think the the gun wasn't damaged, but it just decided to not hit there. So this is where I decided to, to see if I could drive into the, the waterway, if I could drive up the, the side. And I was like, oh, this is a lot steeper than I thought. <laughs> and I was like, uh, yeah, there's no way I'm getting out of here. The, the tank wasn't able to climb up at all. So yeah, don't drive into there. I've never experimented with driving into that part in Waterway. All right, and we're back. And uh, heading into town because the five, six caps are up top. And this is where you want to go if you want to win when you're playing Global Operations. We were down in this game, uh, about 200 points right now. So we needed to make sure that we were holding the five, six caps because if we could do it now, we could probably win this game. There's only eight minutes left. So you can see the, the tanks getting up to about 40, 42, but it, once it gets near 40, it's pretty slow on the acceleration front especially if you run over cars you can see it burned off a lot of my 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 momentum so i'm gonna pop up around here and there is some kind of sabra and there's a bunch of tanks down at the other end of the the field and i get spotted and i can't see what really spotted me and it ended up being basically my own tank and you can see here everything is yellow so I'm not going to try and give him too much to shoot at and I'm going to try and track him in place and see what I can do damage to and I couldn't zoom enough to really hit the spots that I wanted. I wanted to try and hit him in the lower plate but then RT90 pulled out in front of me and I think I tracked him or, or he just decided to sit there and he's still moving so maybe it wasn't my fault but uh, he manages to take him out and I'm going to keep moving forward. And instead of the T90 being a little bit careful, he was a little bit not so much. Kind of thought that shot should go in, but it just didn't. And now the T90 is angling really badly. Uh, he's caught broadside. And I tried to smoke there to save him, but it didn't work. So now I'm going to use his carcass as something to, to hide behind. And this is where the, the tank can do fairly well, because the one turret weak spot isn't very big. And I can just sit here, hold down and let my autoloader load in my shots. 
and put a shot into that guy there. I had a heat round loaded, so it got eaten by tracks, which wasn't the best. But uh, you get what you get. So I was waiting for my, my the rest of my teammates to show up, and once they got there, it was pretty much time to move in right about now. And I didn't have any shots left in the clip, so I had to wait. But I managed to get that shot on the move, which wasn't too bad. And I want to try and get in here and help our 2C against this fella here. I got shots in his back when I do get loaded, so I pump one in there, does 600 damage, which isn't bad at all. And hopefully I can get one more into him right about now. And that was good because I was able to shoot between his tracks, which is not a bad result. And you can see the, the little cockroaches trying to scamper away, but he got murdered was nice. They were able to shoot him from almost halfway across the map, which was really cool. So I still had full hit points, 3350. And you can see there that the, the 2C has got about 3450. So it's not a lot more in hit points. It's it's fairly similar to the tier 5. And I really like how the hit point system is in this game. I like that the tier some tier 5s can have more hit points than tier 9 tanks. I find that pretty awesome. And I think it would be pretty cool if the, you could just upgrade the, the AP rounds or like the, the heat rounds to certain tanks and have a tier 5 fight in, against a tier 9 tank because that's really the only thing holding them back. I think it would be kind of interesting playing with T64 versus T80s and T90s and some of the, the higher end stuff. You could have a faster uh, rebuild time when you die or something and be worth less when, when you do die. Something like that. I think that would be kind of interesting. Kind of flatten uh, the, the, the field out a little bit. So I'm a little bit hauled down behind this dirt. And the T90, of course, is in my way a little bit. So I'm going to see if I can hide. Hide a little bit of the front. Because eventually they probably will try and show up here. So I'm going to wait a little bit. And... Turns out that they don't care about this nightcap. They just decided not to come. So, yeah, you can see the acceleration 30, 35, 30. I turned a little bit, scrubbed off some more speed. Yeah, as soon as you traverse the hull, you scrub off a lot of speed. So I decided to move up with my the rest of my team and put some shots into the... <laughs> I actually managed to, to bounce my heat rounds on the artillery, which is hilarious. But managed to kill him there, and I'm going to have a shot at the pillbox. And it's going to disappear, and I just kind of kept my mouse there and decided I was going to put another shot out. And I was like, uh, <laughs> okay, why didn't I kill that pillbox? It, uh, I didn't move my cursor or anything, and I didn't see the, the cursor do that, that drop that it sometimes does. So now we were winning pretty handily because we were down before in the game. We're now we're a thousand to five hundred, so pretty good result. We managed to hold the the two caps in the city, which is super important, and get a heat round into the side of this T90. And unfortunately, that one didn't go in. I'm gonna try and get this last one in, but no, he's gonna get out of the way, which is a little bit unfortunate. If I had one in the ready rack, it probably would have been able to been able to kill him there, but didn't end up happening. So I've got some free shots at this guy, so I'm going to take them. Again, got a fairly long reload, 9.1 seconds-ish. Identify. I'm going to try and climb up over here. And we got this guy in the side. So I put one into him. Yeah, it looked pretty good at this point, so I wasn't going to get too aggressive, and I wasn't going to really try and drive into the, the enemy cap. Managed to, to get like a blind shot at that guy, which is pretty good. Yeah, I'm not really in, into uh, into spawn camping. Because it is glops, and you can't respawn, and it's no fun to have guys spot you and shoot you as soon as you spawn, even if you are invulnerable. And this was pretty much it. And it didn't turn out to be too bad. Uh, being the lowest tier in a tier seven game, tier five and a tier seven, 
did okay damage. Uh, managed to managed to fight off some equal and higher tier tanks in the town. So not a not a terrible result. The the tank isn't very fast, and it's a little bit slow to turn. The it's best in the city where you can kind of get it a little bit hull down. And the, the results weren't too bad. It made some okay credits, like 120,000 credits. Uh, and I think I got like, yeah, two kills out of it. So you'll see when the, the in the next screen here, the, yeah, I ended up getting some, some kind of reward for playing these vehicles, some kind of battalion achievement. I don't know. <laughs> so we'll jump back into the, into the, the match log in a second. And team-wise, I, I wasn't that high on the, the the screen, but I mean, I was a tier five in a tier seven game and, you know, damage-wise, I was halfway through on the team. So I, I can't really complain too bad. I mean, most of the tier sixes and tier sevens out damaged me, but you would kind of expect that because they do a lot more damage. So yeah, just in general, I think the the Merkava Mark One is a isn't a bad tank. It's a little bit slow, but it's made up for that, and it's it's hit points in its clip, not clip, but it's auto loader. But uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.